But, you know, this is a relationship podcast. And I will say, I've sa I say this everywhere I can because it was a game changer for me. And my therapist, when I was asking her about Devon, she was like, the difference between Devon and the last person you were seeing is that he makes decisions to make his life better. Your ex made decisions to make himself feel better. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's a huge difference. That is a, wow. <laughs> huge because difference. they may not always feel good to do the things that you need to do to make your life better. That's right. Hey guys, welcome back to our Real, real Love Scenario. scenario. Shout out to all our real <laughs> lovers out there. Uh, today's a special day, but before we get started, I just want to give a huge shout out to where we are recording right now. It's Kitchen and Cocktails by Kevin Ooh. Kelly. This is a black owned and black operated spot. Absolutely. I've seen the chef. He was black. Absolutely. I've seen the events manager. Face. It was black. Every face every in here was black. Every single person in here. It's a dope spot. You can get amazing <laughs> drinks. Uh, it's in the, the heart of D.C., really, like right in the city center area. Absolutely. Um, and it's just now opening. So if you are in D.C., come check it out. It's southern com uh, comfort food yes so it's gonna be the really menu delicious looks so good definitely eating after this yeah so special <laughs> shout out to them for letting us film in this space it's gonna be a major spot and staple in dc so whenever you're here make sure you come and check it out absolutely so today's a special day for a lot of different reasons number one <laughs> Rhonda and i've been doing this show for about a year now a little um, over a year a little over a year yeah. and i'm excited because this is our first guest episode whoop whoop and I'm also excited. Applause, 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 applause. applause, applause. <laughs> but the second reason I'm excited is about who our guest is. Yes. Now, you probably clicking on the video, so you already know who it is. But I'm still going to do an introduction anyway. <laughs> uh, this person is a comedian. Yes. An author. Yes. An actor. Yes. A radio show host. Yes. Podcast host. What? I feel like you've hosted, have had every position possibly in entertainment a at some gymnast? point. A gymnast? DJ. She's been a yep. uh, rapper, a uh, yep. singer. Yep. From Nickelodeon to HBO. I'm up uh, to nine. I think I've been <laughs> counting like nine things. But outside of that, um, as I entered into this entertainment space, she was just somebody who I really appreciate um, the advice, the mentorship. Somebody who always picks up the phone because sometimes you call people and they don't pick up the phone <laughs> and they like, ah, why is this person calling again? Uh, don't get her in trouble because she's going to be like, I don't answer the phone for everybody. But, <laughs> they know why I don't answer the phone for them. <laughs> but I'm just excited because she's really been like a great mentor and really helped me in this space. And don't ever say anything bad around her about me because I will not allow it. <laughs> but I'm happy to welcome Amanda Seals to our Ooh, show. I didn't know I was the first. The first. Listen. You are the first. The first. I love the Afro. How is you're here in DC? Yes. The city of Mumbo Sauce and Go Go Music. Like, how's DC been treating you thus far? DC is always a vibe. DC is like my number one market for just like my work but then also it's just so dope whenever i come to dc to see so much blackness everywhere Black yes and um i was out here shooting stuff for my upcoming comedy special mm -hmm. and everything was just so easy and like who when do we ever hear that right Never. when do Never. we ever hear folks Never. say like oh that went smoothly so like <laughs> It's kind of got me gassed. <laughs> like, I mean, it Just feels like God made here. everything easy. So, uh, but no, it was, it's always a good time. So shout out to DC for always yeah. making me feel welcome. So and well, I, I am so happy to have you here. As sure. a person who's followed your career, I am a SEAL squatter. Oh I just God. learned that's our official name, <laughs> yes, but yes. I've been rocking and rolling. I love thank small you. doses. I oh, appreciate you. Gosh, so good. So thank you. Thank, thank you for being for here with us. Me. Thank you so much for coming. All right, you want to hop into our first segment for Miss Amanda it. Sills. This is this is a new introduction to our audience. Yes. We are going to be playing a little game called Real Love or Real Lame. You are our real lovers, and so you should be knowing after, you know, you've been watching the show what real love is, according to us, and what's really lame. But we have Amanda here, so mm. we want to know what she thinks okay. is real love or real lame. Amanda, are you ready? I hope you're ready for this. I'm ready. I know okay. you're going to be honest and transparent okay. with it, That's... too, so I'm excited. All right, let's jump into the first scenario. First one is you are short on cash at the moment, and you ask your boo to help you out, and they tell you no because you should be more responsible with your money. Real love or real lame? It's real lame. Like you could you could give me the money and tell me to be more responsible with my money. <laughs> what about tough love? Like 
I'm trying to give you tough love. Like you've been mismanaging your money for so long. And so many times Wait, no, no, okay. that I'm trying you didn't to say that this happened several <laughs> it, times. That, that, that's the backstory. <laughs> See, one time is not several times. That's not. Okay. There's also something to be said for knowing like my partner's not good with their money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So there's a certain point where you also have to be like um, fair about like, okay, so let's like. Let's have a like person to person conversation. Right. But it also depends on what are they asking for for money for? Like, are they asking for money like to get hair and nails or like right. to not get their car repossessed? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Two so, very different things. But I think um there's so that's the thing with love and all this stuff. Like, there's always so many caveats because how long have y'all been together? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Are y'all dating or are y'all together? together. Right. Are y'all in a relationship or are you all living together? Like right. all these things make for a whole world of difference. So I agree. I agree. It's, but it's real, real lame. It's real lame though. Like I was on a date once with mm-hmm. someone who I was absolutely together with. Okay. And I, when they got, to, actually we weren't on a date. When they got to the house, I was cooking, but they were like, I was like, yeah, it's going to take like 30 minutes for the, I think it was like chicken or steak, but it was like going to take 30 minutes. He was like, damn, I'm starving. Like I, I got to eat something like right now. Mm. I was like, okay, uh, let's just go get some fast food real quick. So we go to get fast food, and he goes into Subway. This is when I lived in Harlem. He went into Subway and got a sandwich. And while he was in Subway, I went next door to the bodega to get, like, a drink, right? Mm -hmm. So I got myself something, and I got him some grapefruit juice. And then when I came back with it, he was like, oh, this is the wrong grapefruit juice. And I was like, okay. Mm. All right, so we'll get the right one on the way back. Uh, then we went into Taco Bell. Everybody knows I love Taco Bell. So <laughs> I go into Taco Bell. He goes and sits down yeah, and waits for me. Like, I'm ordering, and he goes and sits down. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So I order, and then they tell me how much it is, and I look at him, and he's just sitting down. Looking at you like. Looking at me. Like, being real lame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, being real lame. So I pay my little seven dollars for whatever I was getting, like a hard taco supreme, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Nothing too crazy. And um, when when I got my stuff, we were walking out. I was like, you know, you really should have paid for that. And he was like, <sighs> <sighs> like and this all, is you cooking dinner at home. You remember that part? I do remember that part. <laughs> of course, I do. Do you remember when I also got him a drink, but it was the, the wrong, wrong drink, drink, drink mm-hmm, juice, you yeah. know? And yep. he was like, you know. If, if this is what it's going to be, I don't know how this is going to really work. Wow. And I was like, what do you mean? And we had been dating for like three months at this point. And he's like, you know, you want me to, to pay for all the meals. And I was like, first of all, I don't want you to pay for all the meals. But like, I cook for us. Right. And it's Taco and Bell, And you're the bro. one that wanted to eat right it's, away. It's $7. Jesus, like- my guy. So, yeah, really. You know, I'm sure his version of that story is was probably a, a, a very different. different. <laughs> you know, she got, you know, she's she's probably and that's the thing like I think perception is is all very loose, but yeah. in this game, yeah. I perceive that to be real lame. Gotcha. I agree. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm actually with you on that one for I'll sure. Say so. All right, next one. We ready? Yes. Your man is at a cookout with you. And while you all are standing there, a fly lands on your forehead. He doesn't tell you. Instead, he just pops you on the head to try to get it off. Real love or real lame? I want to know this one because my wife don't like bugs. I feel like that's real love. <laughs> that's real love, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm trying to look like, out. I feel like most men actually think action before speaking, which in most cases <laughs> is actually not helpful. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, yes. But I feel like in that scenario, like that's coming from a that's coming from a, a love place. place right? Yeah, like I don't I don't know if popping <laughs> would have been like the best. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> a that, little foof would have done that it. That sounds crazy on the mic, <laughs> but I don't know that that is the best. You know. So for instance, like you know, L A has like earthquakes for sure. And in an earthquake, the best thing to do is to stand under like a doorway, be outside, yeah. or like stand under like a. Um, like a sturdy beam in the house, right? Mm-hmm. But my man is like not like used to earthquakes. So we've had two times now where yeah. we're in the bed and like we get waking up with an earthquake and I like am trying to run to a doorway and he's trying to like, 
like throw his body on top, <laughs> on top of me of to like protect me from oh. a roof caving in or something. And I'm like, this is sweet. Like but I, yeah. I, I appreciate I pre- the effort. I do, I do. You gotta love somebody for that though. The, I do. The effort, you but know what also, I mean? but let's hug under the doorway. <laughs> That's not where we need to be. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like we right. can both live in the doorway. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, but if we just here, you probably gonna die. Yeah. On top of me with the roof. Yep. But everybody will know which our corpses gathered together that he loved you. That's real love. You know they what? Can find you. That's Thank real you. Love. Pompeii. That's real. But love. that's not. Really <laughs> that's not what you want. <laughs> not, no, doorway is right there. <laughs> right there. One more step. Yep. Okay, last one. After a breakup, your ex decides to write a book sharing details of the relationship and says that it's a part of their healing process. Real love or real lame? it's either i mean at the end of the day as long as you honest i'm not really tripping okay, mm, okay. just don't tell no lies yeah or just mischaracterize don't, lie. yeah, don't just mischaracterize that. what it is like don't okay. write a book and say you know she always expected me to pay for taco bell <laughs> she always expected me to pay for subway you know like that's just not how it really went she bro. would get my grapefruit juice wrong every <laughs> yeah, time like, what is this you for know sure. i felt like that was real lame you know what i'm saying right. like if you're doing that then i think that's real lame but ultimately yeah, yeah everyone has their different healing processes um um, I've absolutely referenced exes in my work. I don't necessarily like say Use who they are, stuff, yeah. but yeah. Uh, you know, all of us are like living our own movie. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it is what it is. At the end of the day, it's your story too. That's how I see it. Like both of us experienced yeah. something. And so as long as we're not lying or like, being messy exaggerating yeah, yeah yes. like exaggerating stuff you know right. i feel like sometimes in those situations people are like trying to like ruin whatever relationship you're currently in very true mm-hmm. <laughs> or something any potential like that going future on right now. Yeah. yeah by like dragging you yeah. yeah yeah you know and um i feel like i try to i try my best in those scenarios to just make it very clear that like this is my perception my, like my this experience. is my experience yeah. like i don't know what they perceived but this is what i perceive yeah yeah you should have paid the seven (laughs) dollars and i feel like in most of those situations they try to give like a heads up too right like if they're writing a book about somebody that's the part real love or real lame like that's the real question that's the real like did you give me a heads up or not or or am i just reading about it right yeah Yeah, because if i'm just reading because if you give me a heads up like i just want you to know i'm putting out a project and you're mentioned in the book and i just wanted you to have a heads up about it i'm gonna say that's real love but if you're like yeah, I just wanted you to know I'm putting out a project. Get ready. <laughs> Does it come with the voice and the face? <laughs> yeah, because that's what makes it real lame. Because that's <laughs> real lame. Uh, like, I feel like too, it's huh? italicized like in the text. A little so. corny there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Get very ready. creepy. Very, very creepy. <laughs> well, coming. thank you for playing mm-hmm. our game. Thank you for having me play yes, the game. Yes, of course. Yeah, so we're going to jump into your life now. Oh. Your real life love scenario. And I want to start because when I look at my upbringing my parents were divorced ever since i could remember and i don't think unless i saw my stepdad in the house with my mom i never would have even thought a relationship that was healthy and good and seeing a man lead in a household would be possible Mm. so first i'm wondering what was your parents like marital status and then what was the biggest lesson about love that you learned from your parents whether good or bad my parents were never married. Okay. Uh, my mom met my father when she was selling the house of the husband who left her because she couldn't get pregnant. Wow. That is a mouthful. Okay, say it again. My she- mother met my father when she was selling the house of her husband okay. who was leaving her because she couldn't get pregnant. So he left her with the house. So he had moved to California. She, He's like... So his company had moved into California. He came here ahead of time. Then he was like, "Um, I bought a house. Like, I'm moving you out here. Come on out here. She came out here. And like within 24 hours, like he like didn't come home. And she was like, where are you? And he was like, oh, I went to a party for the for the uh, company last night. But um, it was a party where wives couldn't come. (laughs) Oh, wow. It's one of those guys. "Mm, Wow. Like this can't. My mom was like this. Like this can't be how things go. So like this is not going to ride with me. And he they were like at an extended stay for that. You know, like companies will put you up in an extended stay. Yeah. And so uh, while the house was closing, like they were at an extended stay. So like literally she'd been there for like 24 hours. He came with that BS and she was like, yeah, that's not going to fly. He like left, came back and was like, I got my own room. Um, And my mom was like, 
uh, okay. And he was <laughs> like, I got my own room and, you know, I'm seeing somebody who can actually have children because my mom couldn't get pregnant oh, for 10 years. Wow. wow. And wow. so she was like, oh, all right. But like this house is like still being closed on. And, you know, it's like we're both, both their money is in the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. She had to go to the house. So she went to the house. And so he would like come to the house on weekends and try and like play husband. Yeah. Mm. But doing whatever he wanted to do like during the week. And my mom said she eventually, she just like realized like mm. the only way I'm going to get out of this marriage is I have to like sell this house. Like yeah. that's what's actually the house like was trapping the connector. us. Yeah. yeah. So she decided to sell the house and her husband like, he like worked for like a major company. I think he worked for like IBM or something, but he was like a get rich quick kind of guy. Like Hustler. he was, yeah. So he was like, he had like all these like gum machines and um like gumball machines like Wrigley's and oh, Spearman gotcha. and gotcha. like uh, yeah, double yeah. like double men mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. um and big like uh, big red, big red. Yes. yes 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 so he had like all of those in um like laundromats yeah. so they just had like boxes and boxes of because they didn't even have furniture they just had boxes and boxes of gum, gum. <laughs> like because they had like it was like a big house and they had moved from a smaller house like mm-hmm. the f- little furniture they had was like there yeah. and so the story is that my dad came to look at the house and that he was like um so who's getting the gum in the divorce mm. and mm. it was like ha 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 <laughs> okay and so Sparks. Yeah, it sparks over. My mom and I are both sticklers for jokes. You got jokes, you can get a long way. (laughs) So, so that's how they met, and um, I guess they started seeing each other. It's all very hazy. Um, Okay, okay. And uh, six months later, ta da! And he was like, "Oh, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to uh, like trap me." My mom was like. I'm 34 and I have a 401k. Like you're a med (laughs) student. You're not like a trap. No need. (laughs) Like so, he was a lot younger than she was. I don't know if he was a. He's not a. He's eight years. Yeah, he's eight years younger. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. but my mom was just like, like you're not a, a cat. Like you're, you're not, not a trash. Tra- yeah. Like yeah. Um, and so he like dipped off and like did not um like was not present throughout my mom's pregnancy. Wow. And mm. then. Uh, but my mom, like the people at her job, like they like really rallied around her. Some yeah. of them were like, are you going to do this? You sure you don't want to get an abortion? Like you're going to be a single parent, blah, blah, blah. My mom was just like, I mean, I tried for like 10 years to get pregnant, so I might as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. and so I like, I knew my, like, I, I know my father, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. he would come in. So once I was born and then like, <laughs> she said that like one day he came he came through to, to visit and he was like oh I'm like taking I'm gonna take you out to lunch and on the way to lunch he had us all stop at UCLA to take a paternity test that is crazy oh, that's <laughs> a bold nigga right there okay. that's crazy. Roxbury Boston oh he's from Roxbury um, so <laughs> we uh, but then after that when it was like you are the father, father now yeah. he wanna like you know be more present and stuff Yeah. and I didn't I mean, I remember like seeing them interact, but it wasn't romantic. Mm-hmm. Um, like he would come to the house and I think my mom for all intents and purposes was really just like wanting to make sure that I knew my father and that, you know, mm-hmm. he felt present and that, and that I think she wanted him to also feel welcome because I think that just being Caribbean, like being West Indian from Grenada, but also like thinking now with my mature mind, I think she was, Ex- she thought she felt like she was expected as a woman to like make things nice for this yeah, person. Yeah, make them comfortable yeah. for yeah. him. Yeah, who's mm-hmm. not making worthy them comfortable of it. for yeah, her. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we took the Ola Mills family pictures and all the shits, <laughs> all of it. And then yeah. he came. He took us to dinner one day, one night when I was like, I think probably like six or seven. He took us mm-hmm. to dinner, and then when we got home, she said he called and was like, "Oh, I just want to let you know, I'm getting married next week." Oh wow! Jesus, that was crazy. Jesus. Like, These brothers out here, like wow. Listen, I saw that when people talk about the good old days. That's I'm, like, I'm like, it's been wild for a long time. It yeah. has. Our our stories are similar, you know, from the fracture with my parents. Like I really don't remember them being loving in it, not like at all. Um, they were together until I was like two, mm-hmm. but from that point it was always just my mom making space for him to yes. come and be a father. Yes. She never talked bad about him right. to, to me. You know, mm-hmm. she would always, you know, mm-hmm. pack your little bag. Dad's coming. Even if you haven't seen him for six months. Right, right. Or eight. That's your father. You need to go. Um, so I, I, I've recognized that. And I also recognize how 
it can feel kind of awkward where you don't know, like, does this person really love me? Do they really like me? Are they abandoning uh, me? I kind of struggled with that. Was that really? something that, yeah, like I, I really went through that. that experience with my dad where I was like, why does he come in and out? Like, mm. it's so weird. According to my diaries uh, that my mother has recently discovered, <laughs> okay. I did think that. Mm -hmm. mm. But like, I don't have a memory of thinking yeah, that. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Like, I, I, I recorded it, so mm -hmm. it clearly was taking place. Yeah. And then I had like a breakthrough in 2020 during the pandemic after discovering these and actually I was dating someone who was like a complete evil person, but like is, you know, even a broken clock is twice is right twice a day. Yep. Yeah. And he was like, Oh, like you were like, I had found the diaries and I was reading them. And he was like, Oh, like you were sad because of your dad. And I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, hmm. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> well, I, I never, thought, I never really looked at it that way. <laughs> and I was like talking to my therapist about it. And somehow I can't even remember how the epiphany happened, but it was like, ta-da, like, you have abandonment issues. Mm. You are codependent. It mm -hmm. is related to your father. Yeah. Like, I had to come home for three months in a pandemic to get to this. <laughs> figure it out. Uh, I thought, we've been, we've been doing this for five years. <laughs> but that really was like a very like, like yeah. mind yeah. blowing, like, yes, very eye opening uh, epiphany. And it allowed me to change how I was relating to mm -hmm. relationships. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, six months later, I was with Devon. Wow. Look but I that. honestly feel like I had to go through like that all of that. And I didn't have, yeah. like you all said, like the, I would say the most consistent representative that I like representation I had of like a healthy marriage was um, Bill and Claire Huxtable. Really? Mm. Yeah. Like in a real way. I'm not even like exaggerating. Wow. Wow. No, that I mean, that's real. A lot of us, that was it. Or we saw it on TV. Yeah. yeah. And so to some degree, it was like, this is so cool. It's possible. But also, like, is it just on the tube? Well, I don't even think my kid mind thought that went far. that far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like, well, yeah, this, this, this well, is a thing. This, when I know. look at, like, sitcoms or TV, I feel like the Cosby show was a great representation of just black excellence. Just because too, I feel like the kids were like normal. I feel like you could relate to one of, whether it was Theo mm -hmm. or, you know, Rudy, you could relate to one of them. So it actually Jamming felt like a one. real family. What'd you say? <laughs> Jamming on the one. <laughs> no, like I'm like, I'm a Cosby show fanatic. I yeah. mean, Bill Cosby is terrible, but the right. Cosby show itself, which is different than R. Kelly and his music because R. Kelly made yeah. sex music yes. and was also a sexual assaulter. Yes. Okay. Y'all got that? And last I checked, The Cosby Show was, was not, not a show about sexual, sexual assaulting. Assault. It yes. was not. It was not. Not at all. <laughs> so As when people are like, we need to separate, you know, I'm like, you, there's, the, each case is different. For it sure. Is, it is. I so agree. I say all that to say, though, that, yeah, I really feel like, uh, I mean, that's one of like the biggest like cruxes of like my work is like I, uh, acknowledging that like black pop culture is very different than like other cultures and how pop culture is related to them. Because mm -hmm. for us, because our stories were not getting the chance to be told like yeah. as individuals, yeah. pop culture was in many ways the way in which we were getting representation and we're getting to see ourselves. So I feel like that, I mean, that, that whole era like shaped me in like a very actualized way. Yeah. Did you have one in real life that you saw? No. Was like, no. That's still what I'm trying to tell you. Still to this day, <laughs> do you think? Or like, um, or you I don't, don't know that know I'm even people. paying attention okay. to other. I'm just curious because mm. I know that that was a big like I know that people were like, oh, there's no way you could be monogamous and be in a relationship and be happy and be married. Who told and you I, that? A lot of people used to would say that even some women like even when I first met my wife some of the norm i guess when you meet somebody is like some people may cheat or men just cheat and then you take them back and that type of thing but like i know when i saw my mom and my stepdad in the household yeah i was like this is possible i don't care what you what y'all say or what your experiences have been i know it's possible because i saw it growing up so that made me have a positive mindset towards marriage and monogamy and things like that versus I feel like some people because of their experiences and they don't see something as possible have a negative viewpoint of it well I'd like to offer up another vision of that all right I think um you are a creative mm -hmm. and as a creative you are able to make something from nothing it's actually like a godlike skill mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that you can't be a creative in like business or you can't be a creative in like yeah. other ways but like 
when your mind thinks creatively, it means you can take something from nothing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, though, don't trust that. Mm -hmm. If they haven't seen it, they can't yeah. believe it. Yeah. Uh, even people who are like, well, I believe in the Bible and I haven't seen God. It's like, yeah, but you are so tied to every word of this book because you need something to be like yeah. concrete Tangible. in front of you in order for you to like believe it. Yeah. So I think there's something to be said for people who are individual can identify that like, oh, this is a norm, but I'm me though. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you were like, I mean, yeah, like this is a norm, but not only does I see my family do it, but I'm also like, I'm Dre, and this is what I want for Dre. Y'all yeah. yeah. can have whatever y'all want, but this is what I want for Dre. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people kind of get caught up in like the trend of things, myself included. Like I've definitely had to, at times in my relationship, be like, is this what you want? Or is this you like kind of uh, acquiescing to some type of social norm? Yeah. yeah. The pressures of society can be overwhelming and especially as an adolescent, especially like growing up and coming through that phase of life where like everything is about fitting in. Mm -hmm. Everything is about I got to connect. So do you remember kind of that time where you maybe started dating where it was any pressure around the friends you were with or um, mm -hmm. kind of your first boyfriend and maybe what that experience was like? So I was a late bloomer. OK. Um, what do you mean by that? I mean, I didn't have to do so like. 2000 <laughs> <laughs> like, like physically like a late physically, literally yeah. got you. Mm -hmm. uh, i was a gymnast and i was just like a very like intense person like i was very yeah. into what i was into yeah i didn't get my first kiss till uh prom 10th grade mm -hmm. oh wow and then i didn't get kissed again until senior year shout out to andre small <laughs> and then <laughs> and and then I didn't get kissed again mm -hmm. until like the summer. Uh, Headed uh, to yeah, college. and that wasn't for a lack of trying. Like to, I mean, shout to Marquise Price. Um, <laughs> I mean, really, what it was was I was a late bloomer. Like gotcha. they they wasn't checking for me. You mm. know, I mean, the sun. Like I had that one of those growth spurts. Like from one summer, you know, I, like junior year, I left looking, mm -hmm. you know, like I was on Ghost Rider, and then. I came back senior year and it was like, oh, oh, okay. Like, and even though like I hadn't like physically popped out, like I just, I, I think I just had like a maturation take yeah. place, yeah, right? Yeah. Now I'm shopping at Wet Seal. Not got <laughs> kids. Okay. Little BB for the girls. Yes. <laughs> and so uh, I just remember like the boys start, like I remember hearing like rumblings of like, mm -hmm. oh, like Amanda Fine. I was like, yeah. I'm fine now? <laughs> wow, look at that. Um, <laughs> I remember sitting down in front of the library with Scott Cunningham and him telling me, like, you know, I just I heard well, you I, that the you names. Remember That's what I'm saying. You remember all these, these people. Names. That yes. is crazy. I can draw them. That is insane. <laughs> That's so good. That's and crazy. Scott was like, uh, let me holler at you real quick. <laughs> Where was he from? What was that uh, accent? Orlando. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. This That's is that our Florida. Orlando. That's that Florida. <laughs> and he was like, so check it. It's been brought to my attention. <laughs> that you got a little crush on me. <laughs> and though I'm very flattered, mm. uh, there are currently activities that I partake in that you don't partake in, okay? <laughs> and I wouldn't want you to feel pressure <laughs> to partake in them activities. Mm. So I just think it would actually be in both of our best interests, mm. you know, to just keep it cool. That was a very gentleman-like way of, like, putting it together, though. Scott Cunningham, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and that was real. And I was like, you know, and I think back. Um, so, like, that was when I first started being, like, a, like more aware. Of, yeah. I was always aware of boys, but I knew they weren't aware of me. So it didn't matter. Yeah. Right. Mm. But this was at a time where I start like being more aware. And I will say, I, I, Scott told me later that basically there was like a conversation. They had like a symposium mm. where it was like, so we're going to leave Amanda alone. Oh, wow. Okay. Like we, yeah, like hands off Amanda. Mm. And my, um, my partner said that there was, he had a similar situation where like, there was like a, a hood symposium and they were like, we going to leave on alone. Like we not gonna we not gonna press him about hustling and sh like he need to go play basketball and go to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like there, it's crazy how like it's like these like social spaces like it really does take a village in mm -hmm. ways that you don't even it know. It takes yeah. a little community. Yeah, They're, like looking at and so you, like, basically mm. like the bros in high school was like we not gonna 
try and, you know, yeah. sully your reputation mm. to get nice. some cutty. Uh, <laughs> which, I mean, that never would have happened because, like, I was you like, like I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know. That, I don't know what we're doing. Uh, but that was, like, the beginning of that era. And then when I went to college, um, I went to SUNY Purchase. And so it was like, like, New York, New York niggas was a whole other... Yeah, whole I mean, nother. it's like an island. It, it's like it they're, is. They're, they're it's their own culture. No, sure. but like it was, yeah. it was like mind blowing, and also women, because it's too. college, so like people are like adults. Mm -hmm. So that was the other thing too. It was like, oh, y'all are men. Yeah. Yes. Ah, you know. <laughs> yeah. So like you have hair on your face yes. fully, and you're like approaching me like I'm a woman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I don't know. What <laughs> my mom just made me breakfast last yes. week. Yes. <laughs> my mom sent me here with a lunch. Like, <laughs> but I feel like I. But I would I didn't have anyone like telling me how to navigate these spaces, mm. you know, uh, and so I had like a very clumsy mm -hmm. process through men. Same. Very Same. clumsy for very long. Yeah. Time. <laughs> and um, and like my mom and I have talked about it, you know, yeah. like I remember one time I was on the breakfast club and she was like. And like I talked to her after and she was like had attitude with me. I was like, why do you have an attitude with me? And she was like, I mean, is it every interview I'm gonna have to hear about somebody else you slept with? <laughs> I was like, I mean, possibly, because keep it a buck, I slept with a lot of people. Mm. And she was like, Wow. <laughs> you thought you were mad before. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, I'm just keeping it a thousand with you because I was like, I genuinely like did not know what I was doing. Yeah. And I like I guess I thought like intimacy and sex were the same thing and I had to yeah. like figure that out mm -hmm. and I think for a long time a lot of us women who don't have like any real guidance in this area like you think like you have to have sex yeah, yeah. like you just feel like oh like that's like a that's it thing even mm -hmm. if you're not with somebody then it feels like oh I'm supposed to be like I'm in my hope phase. like it's just a lot yeah and so I had to kind of get through mm -hmm. and so I was telling her you know so that was that and she's like well I just feel like I didn't give you what you needed for that I was like well you didn't you didn't <laughs> but, but you it, didn't have it not to get to your it. Fault. That's yeah. right. It's not your fault. Yeah. So here we are. And um I'm I'm fine. <laughs> I survived it. I yeah. survived it. No, that's, when I think about dating now or your dating once you got past college and stuff like that, because you've been in the industry for so long. Mm. Um I know the episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think about when I was like playing football in college and like how I was like, I want to date another athlete, somebody who gets my life, who understands the schedule, who understands all these things. <laughs> Um, and then even in an, entering into like entrepreneurship, it's like I want somebody who understands like my life and stuff like that. So I wonder as you were dating and you were doing things in the industry, especially in the in entertainment industry, where you like I need to find somebody in this industry that kind of maybe not a star necessarily like you, but somebody in the industry that gets your life, how you move or were you more thinking like somebody outside because it'll be more refreshing or you just were just like it didn't matter. I wish I had been that thoughtful. <laughs> I remember, so I can curse on this, right? I already cursed yeah, on this. Yeah, yeah. I remember my homeboy telling me, um, you see, the problem is you were sucking the wrong dicks. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you was actually, like, sucking the dicks because you liked them. Mm. <laughs> it, was like, it wasn't a power move. Like, it wasn't, yeah, like, there was no thoughtfulness. Not strategic it was like, at all. <laughs> like, yeah, like, you know, I like you for whatever reason. Maybe it's because we get along mm -hmm. or you're fine or... Mm -hmm. You know, I'm enraptured by, you know, just your artistic, you know, spirit, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. there was a multitude of reasons, but I never at any point was like, I need somebody who, yeah. <laughs> You're I mean, just figuring it out. You know what's so crazy thinking back? Like, my the 20s was really just figuring it out. For yes. sure. Like, it... It is such a crazy time. Mm -hmm. And then add on top of it, like there was like a fame element mm -hmm. and then you're trying to figure out money. You're just, there's just so much learning that's happening. Then you get to your thirties mm -hmm. and you find out that your body's like, yeah, we're doing new things now. You're yeah. like, so hemorrhoids, that's a thing. Wow. Um, you're like, oh, wow. Okay. You know, <laughs> hey, mom, not? still yeah. need you. <laughs> like, what do you do? Cause I'm sure you felt this before. <laughs> you're like, where did, when is that? What is, you know? So yeah. mm -hmm. I feel like I never really was that thoughtful about it, but by nature of proximity, I ended up dating people in the business just because that's what I was doing all the time. Like, yeah. and I didn't have like a, like my family was literally just like my mom and then like sometimes my aunt. So I didn't have like a family structure that I was going to outside of work 
You know, like my friends were all basically either people I went to school with mm -hmm. or people that I was interacting with with inside of the business. So I yeah. was very insulated inside this bubble of like hip hop when in, mm -hmm. in like the 2000s. And so I'm like, I'm dating rappers, I'm dating DJs, I'm dating record exec people. Like I'm just dating people that are in, in proximity. Yeah. 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 So, so um, thinking about like dating as a public figure, I mean, and, and at that time, it sounds like you were kind of on the rise. You were in the process of getting to where you are today. But do you, did anybody kind of have these misconceptions about you coming into it? Like what they did see of you as a performer, as a spoken word artist? Was it kind of this thing of like they were already judging you or placing misconceptions on you? And, and kind of did that discourage you at all? Hmm. In the dating space? Yeah. Hmm. Um, I, I'm trying to think... But I don't, feel, you have to understand, like, dating is a strong word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't feel like I had people, like, asking me out on a date. Got you. You know, like, it wasn't even that formal. It's more so kind of like you, you kind of hang, you, like, end up. Picking it. Like, I'm yeah. feeling you, you feeling me type of thing. But even if it's like, oh, we're all at this event, and now, like, we're after the event, like, we're getting dinner, you know? Yeah. Or, like, oh, like, we did an interview, and now the interview's done, this like, Oh, like, oh, let's all go here, you know? And so, like, that's kind of how things would just naturally um, progress. progress. And it wasn't as formal as, like, hey, I like you. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, were there people saying, hey, I like you? I, that's who I should have been <laughs> going on the dates with. Yes. Uh, but I was just more in a, like, free like kind of just I'm a free spirit kind of gal anyway but mm -hmm. it was just more like that that just seemed to me more engaging um and if I'm being honest with myself I wasn't ready for nothing real anyway even mm -hmm. though we all try and tell ourselves like oh That's like right. I at that moment real. you yeah. thought you were though oh of course yeah mm -hmm. but in hindsight it's like no you wouldn't no have been able you would have ruined anything real for sure mm -hmm. um and so I didn't have like those so I, I feel like that type of interaction where someone would even relay that yeah. may not have really happened. I will say that I had one long-term relationship and it was only a long-term relationship because I was like, I need to have a long-term relationship. I mm. should break up with this person, but I, I need I'm to push it. I need to experience a long-term long relationship. How long was it? It was a year and a half. Okay. But you know, in, in a time of like three months and done, <laughs> yeah, a year and a half is like, that was, an eternity. That was same yes. for me too. Yeah, I completely, yeah, <laughs> like, I get that. And um, I feel like he would like bring in things, mm -hmm. you know, and he would like weaponize them against me. And yeah. then like my ex before Devon, same. But yeah. I, you know, I understand that that's really, that, that was more so just a reflection of like, they didn't have shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so it was like, well, let me try and wield this, mm -hmm. this, what these things that I know, like get under your skin or these things that I know, like are a problem for you. Like I'm going to use them against you because I know that I'm actually the problem. Yeah. Like I, I experienced that. I'm sorry. I, I experienced that. On such a small level, though, it's like nowadays because I'm single, not in a relationship, but dating. And it's like this. They want to they feel like they know you because they might see you on social media. So then that becomes a thing. Like I was dating a guy, went on two dates with him and somehow he found my Instagram. And then for the entire third date, he kept calling me by my Instagram name. That's gross. And I was That's like, weird. real lame. What is happening? <laughs> and then he kept saying it like in this sleazy little voice, like Ronnie Kegs, Ronnie Kegs. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to get on out of here. Like, I have to wrap it up. So it's like this thing where they feel more familiar with you yeah. than they actually are. We well, got to remember when, there wasn't social media for right a long time. Like, mm -hmm. even when social media popped off and like, oh, wait, yeah. I don't feel like people were still... It wasn't so much of a part of our culture. Yeah, it was, a, yeah. Yeah, it was, a, right? it was exclusive thing more so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did go on a date with someone who was like interviewing me on the date. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I was like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I remember texting the person I had been like, I was in love with someone at the time. And I remember texting them like, I want a bullshit date because of you. Because of you. <laughs> no, I was wondering with um, 
as you got further into your career and you got more popping, right? And the money started coming. I feel like a lot now that, you know, we have these conversations about women doing a lot, being high earners, providing all that conversation. And we have these like societal norms to where it's like the man's supposed to provide and the woman takes care and nurtures what's being provided by the man. But I don't feel like we've caught up as a society to women being high earners and how to navigate those relationships. So with you being a woman who is a high earner, how do you feel like people should navigate that space or, um, you know, approach relationships when you are a woman who like is earning or out earning maybe the man that you're dating? You know, I think that one of the biggest things is that for a very, very, very long time, men got to be seen as individuals with identities and women were seen as women. Mm. Like we just didn't, get to be seen as individuals. Yeah. So our skill sets weren't considered. That's right. So yeah. men also lost in this because there was this expected skill set that every man was supposed to have. And maybe every man doesn't have that skill set. And even if you do, like there may be a woman who has a, like a better version of that. Right. Yeah, sure. So in these partnerships, it's really about like, okay, what are you good at and what am I good at? Yeah. Let's base what we how we move on that, not sure. on what society says mm-hmm. is supposed to be the case. Mm-hmm. And I've had to shift in regard to that myself. Like there were definitely like preconceived notions that I had about like what my man should be able to do mm-hmm. and what he should be about. And then when I really like thought about it, it was like, yeah, but like that's like something that you're good at. Yeah. So like why are you even like one, why are you pressing that he needs to be good at it? And two, like, why are you undermining the validity of the fact that, like, you have that skill? That. Yeah. And it's not like he's looking at you like, but it doesn't matter if you have that skill, you know? And so, like, I mean, in my relationship, I would definitely say that, like, I am, like, the planner. I am the thinker. I'm the type A personality, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But Devon is very, like, get it done. And he's also like really the more personable person with like all the people coming in out the house and stuff. Listen, I spend my whole day talking. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm talking on this podcast, then I gotta talk on the phone, then I gotta talk on the Zoom, then I gotta talk on my podcast, then right. I gotta talk on the radio show. I yeah. ain't really trying to come now talk to Ezekiel who came to clean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so. <laughs> Whereas, like, he's an engineer. Yeah. So the most talking he's doing is, all right, get ready for the punch. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, y'all ready? All right, play back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there's just, like, us understanding yeah. what we are individually good at. And I think that's what needs to happen in this present day is, like, the true uh, – understanding of women in it as themselves and men understanding their women as like oh like you're like a whole you're a whole person a whole person mm-hmm. you're not just yeah. a uterus like you're not just a vagina a maid. you're not just a maid yeah. and you know what you may <laughs> not be good at cleaning that part that, like yeah. my ex was way better at cleaning than me yeah. like i can clean but that nigga was in jail. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just better at cleaning. <laughs> like, and I was like, I don't understand what the correlation is. He was like, because when you in jail, you got time. That's yeah, it. I and do. so you and you were just in this you little space. So things. you need it mm-hmm. to be as tidy as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I tell people that because I feel like everything in, in, in relationships isn't always like 50 50 straight no. down the middle. Right. No, Impossible. it's like, what are you good at? And what am I good at? Yeah. And then that is the right balance. Because why am I sitting here wasting time doing something I'm not good at? Sir. Like, why? it doesn't make any sense. Like, my wife is not good at technology. She'll be sitting there for an hour trying to do something. And then I could do it in like five seconds. And it's like, okay, that's the balance when it comes to more technical things, Mm -hmm. different things in the household I will handle. I'm not asking you to hook up the TV or do something that's technical because why? Just to say 50, 50, I did it last time. Now you You got to do do it it this time. time. It's like that balance. Regimental in these like weird ways. Yeah. And like, like, I'm like, I'm good at tech, but Devon is great at tech. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing too. Also for a lot of us who've been single forever, Mm -hmm. we also keep operating like we're single and that's both men and women and you know, non-binary, that's everybody. Like you keep trying to go into a new situation with your old like practices. Yeah. So like I've also had to learn like, oh, I don't need to do all the things. 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 (laughs) Yes. Yes. I don't need to do all the things. And he's had to learn like, oh, like, 
I don't need to be like isolated, right? Yeah. Like, like he's had to open up and just really like understand, like, oh, this is a team. Yeah. Like this really is squad. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But that comes with a certain level of trust, though, that yeah. you gotta have and build in your partner to release that, especially as somebody who's type A, like releasing. I have no that. problem releasing. Yeah, no, but you have you to hear trust my stuff. I, I don't said all type of shit on this podcast. I have no problem releasing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say I joke all the time. Like, yes, I want to be in a relationship, right? I want monogamy. I'm looking forward to it. I've had it. I, I've had the joys of it. But jokingly, I'm like, I legit just want to release some shit. Like, I want to yeah. be like, woo, somebody <laughs> else is doing that. Somebody else is taking the trash out. Somebody else is going, going downstairs to get the water. Just the smallest things. Mm -hmm. A little errand, like, hey, babe, can you bring me up uh, some chips while you're down there? Like, right now, it's just the dogs. <laughs> we, we don't it's love that, by the way. We do not love that, just to let you know. My wife will put something in the microwave and then get back in the bed and be like, can you grab me that out the microwave? Yeah. Can you no, me? I don't. I don't your, want to do your that. Your feet are you up. Just, I didn't ask if you wanted, wanted to do it. Cause, well, cause, are you willing? Like, because I'm gonna do a version of this for you easily. So, easily. Come on. Easily. I mean, listen. I think the other part of it too is that you realize that, like, you have, sometimes you have to have like a conversation about that. Very like, true. what are our roles? You mm -hmm. know, like what, like, cause I feel like, especially if you don't have kids, like that ends up actually like sometimes like being to, needed to like be actually spoken about. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think a lot of us are so trained to think that all this relationship stuff happens just organically and magically. It doesn't. <laughs> it takes so much work. And talking. Yes, communicating. Yeah. It takes so much communicating. Yeah. Even just like knowing how to communicate your feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like being able to say like, I am upset because da 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 da. And knowing and when to. Like taking uh, a beat and knowing that right when you're feeling it, this is may, may may not be the moment. Like you might have to give it ten minutes. Well, that's what you know. My my staple that good communication is effective communication, yeah. and in order to communicate effectively, you have to know your partner. You have to know when to talk to him, how to talk to him. Mm -hmm. You want to be effective. Just saying stuff and being transparent. To satisfy yourself. Just to, yeah, just yeah. being it's, open it's and just honest. The truth. It's just the truth. I hate. It's just the truth. That's Ooh. not effective. <laughs> <laughs> it's honest, I guess. It's your great, truth. Great. It's your yeah. truth. Yeah. Oh, it's but also it's not, mean. It yep. is very mean. And Sometimes it puts people it's on just defense. mean. It put, mm -hmm. They said it puts What'd people on defense. It puts people on defense. Yes. Yes. When you're just like shooting at them, like you get so many more. That's saying you get more, more bees with, with honey. And it's true. It's like I have had to learn that. And I, I when you said earlier, like I would not have been ready. Right. If when I thought I was ready, my 20s, whatever, would it have been nice? Yes. Do I think hope that I would have been able to navigate it had I got married at 27 or 28 or like, you know, like Dre was younger when he got married. I would like to believe I would have figured it out. But looking back now at 39, I'm like, I'm actually like ready. Like mm -hmm. now I can really know like I've done so much work, but I've also experienced I've been clumsy and those clumsy experiences have led to like learning also becoming like into literature like that has been a thing that wasn't a thing mm. when I was a kid and I know that like you love to read mm -hmm. and I, you mm -hmm. know outside of being an author I know that you are an avid reader were there any books at any point that you felt like you leaned into during this process like in your journey of understanding yourself and kind of preparing if you will or just takeaways maybe to you be honest it was a cool I'm not as avid a reader anymore as I would have as I would like to be like time Mm -hmm. is when I was in New York I was on the train so I could like read Real on the train time. you yeah. know but in LA it's like you in the car and then even if you like get a Uber like you it's it's hard to read in a car you know yeah. um so I don't I don't feel like there were any books that I can come to my you know the books that I feel like there's the alchemist and the Warrior of Light by Paulo Coelho, like those are both books that like help me like learn myself, but not necessarily like as it relates to relationships. Yeah, but learning yourself is is crucial. Oh hell yeah, yeah. For, sure. for any relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, the biggest thing for me in my journey was therapy, and right. that's not everybody's experience, yeah. but it's been mine. Just like therapy, but also like speaking to like astrologists, like going to Reiki, like experiencing like different spaces of healing. Mm -hmm and perspectives and um, being open to that. Like, I feel like people kind of hold me to like a very rigid point of like view. Like mm -hmm. 
I mean, I've, I'm not the same person I was like a year ago. Yeah. Mm. Um, because you grow, you heal. Like if you're actively doing the work, like you're going to grow, heal and change. Yeah. And so there's like a lot that is like a constant, I feel like moving mm -hmm. process yeah. in my own development. I mean, and that comes from like movies. That also comes from, I feel like honestly, it's been more or less, it's been less about the books and more about the people I've been around. Gotcha. Like I don't have any like fuck them niggas people in my life anymore. Mm. Love that. Um, and I get that. You know, yes. like once upon a time, you have like those homegirls. It's like anytime you express any situation, it's mm -hmm. like, man, fuck that nigga. And you're like, that's not helpful. <laughs> well, no. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Nope. Um, and for a good stretch of time, I had really good homeboys. Yeah. Mm. You need those. We, we were just, just talking, talking about, about this. that. Yeah. We were just I had really, that. really good homeboys yeah. who just really showed me love but also like we could have like conversations that were completely platonic but that helped give me perspective and yes. understanding and just helped me like learn more about like how i'm showing up in situations mm -hmm. i had an epiphany today though i was like i realized that like all my homeboys that i fell out with all of them it was for the same reason it was because i'm <laughs> sharing with them um that they were treating me in a way i didn't like got you all of them. I counted six homeboys today that I can at one point in time would have said like, this is my brother. Oh no, it's seven. And all of them, it was like, Hey, so like this thing that you're doing or this thing that you did, I didn't like that. And that was it. Mm. That was a wrap. Yeah. One of them, we're back. Okay. Shout out to you on. <laughs> and we're back because he was like, yeah, I was, I, he's well, from sure. France. I was treeping. Um, but <laughs> I feel like that was more of it. But you said something earlier where you were like, um, you know, you got to learn your partner. I don't yeah. think a lot of people are trying to learn their partner. No, no, not at all. They're trying to morph them into who they want them to be instead of understanding who they are. Yes. So that they can figure out how to relate to them. And if they can relate to them, like you're trying to force the force the situation instead of being like, huh, this might not be the situation. We get that a lot on the podcast yeah, where people write in, right in where they're like, how do I persuade or change or blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, maybe this just isn't your person. Maybe this mm, just isn't the one that yeah. is supposed to work for you. And if you learn yourself and you have the discernment to understand who you are, you can be a better uh, evaluator or uh, observer of others. You yeah. can start to really look at them and have experiences with them where it's like, I don't like the way that made me feel. And we could talk about it, but now I need to see how you perform after that, after we talk about it and you just, you navigate it. It yeah. is to some degree a process of elimination, if you will, but not so much like by individual. It's just, I don't know if we're gelling. I don't know if that is our vibe. I don't know if we even have a vibe for each level and marking of where we're all, where we are. Like you might yeah. be good in the first 30 days because you didn't do much. You went on a couple of dates, but what happened six months later when now you're Man. dealing with the month where you couldn't go on dates because you're traveling, you're working yeah. a lot, you're tired, your mom's sick, whatever. It's figuring figuring out can they really stand that full test of time with the seasons, as and people I, say. Yeah, and I think to your point, the issue is where a lot of people, they always think like in the right now sometimes and don't think of like the consequences mm -hmm. and what ruins so many relationships. It's creepy though. Like you won't, it creeps up on you and when it gets there, you're like, ah, how do I get out of this? It's resentment. It's like you are like asking somebody to do something. You're forcing them, forcing them, forcing them, forcing them. They finally say yes. And you feel like in that moment, yay, I won. I got what I want. But then they start resenting you for certain things that happen, for the actions that you have taken. Or you're actually resentment, resentful because it took them so long. Long, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like that's been like that's like a been a, like a an argument with me and my partner, where like me and Devon, where it's like, if I'm not getting the point that he's making fast enough, then yeah. by the time that I get the point, now he's upset that it took me that long to get the point. <laughs> it's like, never mind. And I'm just like, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> I, 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 I eventually conceded the point. Like, I, you know, maybe you weren't explaining it well, or maybe yeah. I wasn't listening, but like, yeah. I got it. So can we like get it? Let's just move you know, on. it's like I, I'm like you. Listen, it doesn't happen in real time all the time. No, yeah. no. So talking about Devon, I yes. remember you know I've been following you online for some time, and I remember when you posted something about him, 
And it was something so sweet. I'm obsessed with like how soft and like giddy and girly we become when <laughs> there's a person in our Rhonda life. Voice that be we, changing. When I'm around her on the phone, I'm like, who are you talking to? That's because <laughs> <laughs> that's real that's a real thing. That's a real thing. Also, men can't handle when you talk in your full voice. Nope. And that's another thing. That's so. that's when you're like aggressive and, and am and I right? Might, it's I don't know about that. It's true. Y'all don't like that. It's true. If you have a deep voice, men do not like when you talk to them in your full deep voice. Mm -hmm. Like just a basic request of like, hey, can you grab me that? Sounds, Sounds like. Sounds aggressive. Yes. <laughs> so you gotta be like, honey. It'd be like, what's babe? wrong? Like what I do? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I'm literally just saying, hey, can you grab me that? But because it sounds like this, it's like, <laughs> hey, can you grab me that? <laughs> too? It's like, how, like in your mind, you hear Debo. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. so you have to be like, hey, can you grab me that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a little to little inflection it. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I loved seeing that. I saw that light on your face. I saw that light in the in in the interaction. So I want to know a little bit about this. I know you've talked about Devon and how this was a boomerang. This is someone from you dated in college and then you kind of found yourselves back to each other in a romantic space many years later. So how did that how did that happen? How did that happen? I mean, it's this life is so weird because what you think is like a one single thing actually is like eight things happened for mm -hmm. that to happen. For yeah. sure. Yeah, you know I mean, like um, he had been texting me happy birthday for three years, but the number wasn't saved. So I didn't even know it was him texting me. That's happy how you birthday. know. Did you answer back at least? No, because I was like, who the hell is texting me happy birthday from a number I don't know? <laughs> if, if I don't have this number in my phone, I don't feel like I need to be like responsing. Yeah. Mm. So I didn't. Um, and. <laughs> And then, so, okay, so in the pandemic, right? So I told you I had my epiphany. Mm -hmm. And then I was, like, dating this, I had, like, rekindled with this, like, person who was just not a good person and not a good person for me, Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I mean, literally in his own words, he's like, I'm not a good person. So it's not even just, I'm not rewriting the story for the for the movie. Yeah. Right. Um, and so we, like, rekindled, and then, like, he did some wild shit. And I was like, ah, that's a wrap. Okay, mm -hmm. so then, but I will say, though, I had reached a point of, like, I know what I want. Yeah. I remember I told you I never, like, thought like that. Yeah. But now it was like, no, like, I like I know what I'm ready for and I know what I want. And mm -hmm. I, I want a relationship. For sure. And so then it becomes where I feel like you're just, like, opening your mind to, like, who are the possibilities? <laughs> <laughs> like... And so, like, me and a other homeboy, like, you know, we tried to boomerang, but it just wasn't ringing. Mm -hmm. um, and then me and another homeboy, like, we tried to boomerang, but he was like, you want something that I can't give you right now. It was a very yeah. Scott Cunningham in front of the library conversation. Got yes. you. It was like. He's like, I love you. Like, you're my dog. Like, for real. Mm -hmm. But you want something I can't give you right now. And most niggas will not tell you that. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, most niggas is going to just, like, take what they can from you mm -hmm. and, like, breadcrumb you. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to do that with you. Mm -hmm. And we had actually dated, like, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. And he, like, acted an ass. And we managed to reconcile like over time, I'm trying to think, how did we end up like becoming friends again? But we became like real, like actual friends. Yeah. And then it turned into like, okay, let's try this again. And then he was just like, I, 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 no. And I still was like, well, can we have a conversation? Like, cause mm. maybe, maybe I want some, like maybe there's more to this than I'm like, let's just communicate about it. So he was supposed to call me. He did not call me that night. Mm. And I was like, mm what's Devon doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I literally, and then I texted Devon and was like, send me your Instagram. That's literally what the text said. And we had not talked in five years. Wow. And I said, send me your Instagram. Now I had two numbers for him. No, I had one. So I didn't realize that the, the he had two. Happy birthday he had, number. Well, he had two phones. Got you. So mm -hmm. the happy birthday number was coming from another phone. Mm -hmm. Got it. So I texted him on the number that I know. Mm -hmm. He immediately sent me back his Instagram. And I did like a review because mm -hmm. I am an Instagram forensic specialist. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I did a review and was like, okay, I don't see any issues here. What no, do you I look know. for? I was, I was about, about to say, say what do you look pause. for? And and what's the forensics? What what are the so one? I don't I, one. I look for. Are there any? Is there anything cryptic? Uh, okay. Like when people like put up a picture with another person and it says her. 
<laughs> the hell does that mean? Mm. What is this? Who is she? Why is it cryptic? You know, yeah. like stuff like that. I don't yeah. like nothing like that. Yeah. Um, two like too many selfies. What? Why? Wow. Why are there so many selfies? Like, why do we need to see your face this up close so often? And particularly with like cisgendered heterosexual men, that to me is an indicator of vanity mm. or insecurity. Mm. Gotcha. So either way, we lose him. Okay. Okay. Third, I look for like excessive materialism. Mm. Like really good one. That's a, that's are a good you one. like what? Like I, okay, like we brands. got it. We're clear. Yeah, like yeah, you know, showing the red bottoms every time yeah. they uh, like doing something. <laughs> Why your foot always up? Girl. And I would say four <laughs> frequency of posting. Why you have so many posts, bro? Mm. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, are you in this field? Oh, got you. Or like, because I'm like, what are you trying to do? Like, are you Instagram famous? Like, I don't, I am too in, I'm too public a figure to be with somebody who's like really public a figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, and I guess what I mean to say about that is like, either you're already a public figure. And so like, this is a part of the job. Yeah. Or you like trying, trying to, to be, be one. Yes. So phone out all the time, <laughs> every date, every. Well, like the last person it's I like, had get been. my picture. Hey, babe. Get... The last person I had been dating, he was like obsessed with his phone. Mm. Like he had like a, um, I want to say that it was part of like a, like anxiety. Like there was like an anxiety. anxiety. Like there was like a mental health thing with the phone. Mm. Wow. Like where he was so attached, in, attached to the phone, like yeah. in any level of uncomfortableness was attached to the phone. So like we would go out to eat and he's like on the phone, like the guy in the wedding walking down the aisle with the phone, which mm. by the way, Woo. her family don't love her because mm -hmm. if it was my sister doing that, like walking down the I would have swiped that phone out that man's <laughs> for sure. hand for sure. for sure. So fast. Mm -hmm. I love that everybody were in, were in the comments like maybe he was courting up something Shut for up. the wedding. I'm like, Shut up. the wedding. Him himself during while he's coming <laughs> and also, out. Like so this this little five minutes that we gonna walk from down here to down here. You, had to you be just on your had phone. to be doing it unless you are securing a kidney transplant for a child. Like what? Are we, <laughs> <laughs> like I really got to text us to make sure that this kid gets his kidney. What are we doing? Crazy. Yeah. Um, but. So I uh, after the Instagram forensics, I did my Instagram forensics and then I hit him back. So he had also hit me on that phone mm -hmm. earlier that year, like in the summer, mm -hmm. and was like, "Oh, like how are you?" And I was like, "Are we gonna have a conversation about why we haven't talked in five years?" And he was like, "Oh, I was actually just hitting you to ask how you were." And I was like, "Well, I don't have oh. the emotional bandwidth to carry this you little catch up <laughs> thing. <laughs> Can't do I it." I literally said, "I don't have the emotional bandwidth." Yeah. Wow. Uh, and he was like, "Oh, all right." And I was like, "So, I hope you're well." And he's like, "All right, cool. I am well, though." <laughs> 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 and um. And he hit me back and was like, I hit you to check up on you. So then that made me angry all over again. Mm. So then I let two hours go by. And then I just sent, you know, the dissertation let, text. Let it go. No, mm. I did not let it go. No, I, I mean, like, let the words go. Oh, like, yes. Release, yes. release, release the emotions. Release dissertation yes, yes, text. Yes, yes. Yeah. I don't know why you would even text me or call me <laughs> if you're not actually going to have the real conversation. This is a waste of both of our time. Mm -hmm. The reality is, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then he called me. And then, of course, I'm like, why are you calling me? <laughs> Um, and he's like, because he's like, because like, I mean, let's just talk about it, whatever. I'm like, whatever, like, this is ridiculous. And I don't feel I'm somebody who like, I'm just like, can we just talk about the elephant in the room? Yeah. Yes. But if you try to act like there's no elephant, elephant in the room, room. it sets me that off. That pisses you off even more. Oh my For sure. It feels like gaslighting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's what it is. So I'm just like, is. no. And I'm a, I have a big thing about like access. Like I feel like, um, I'm such a vulnerable person and I'm such an open person mm -hmm. that like respect the access to me. Yeah. So if you're just real loosey goosey, like, yeah, like I know I did that dirty, but like, let me just come back in and get like, act like yeah. nothing happened. Yeah. Like, no, like you don't have the passcode no more. Like we're going to change the locks. Like you can't just closed. like get back in like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was very, um, he let me talk and then he replied, he responded and he said, he said something that was so Devon sometimes be using the wrong words for things. And so like he used the he used the wrong word for something. And I knew what the word meant. Of but course. He <laughs> now you gotta be curious. What's the word? I'm it was basically like he used like I'm trying to remember what it was. It's in my journal. Mm -hmm. Um 
I can't remember the exact word, but he used a word that had like a double meaning. Mm. It wasn't even that the word didn't mean what it meant, but it had a double meaning. Gotcha. And in the context, I took it to mean the this thing, thing. Gotcha. and he meant it to mean this. And I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I hung up the phone. <laughs> and y'all have to also understand, like this is somebody I've literally known since I was 19. Yeah, yes. yeah, a lot of history. So there's you know? a lot of also comfort. And so, just, yes. just yeah. so like, yes. I'm not doing the whole, like, I don't want this nigga to know, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want him to think I'm crazy. We're not playing that game. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm just, <laughs> this is me. You getting full frontal seals. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so he called me back. And again, I'm like, why are you calling? <laughs> <laughs> That's just so funny that women do that sometimes. You hung up on them. Because you didn't want to talk to him no more. But then he called you answered right back. Yeah. <laughs> to, to ask, why are you calling? Don't you love us? I love us. Because I was like, I, I'm just like, why? Like, why? I go, um, you hung up on me. And, <laughs> and uh, I was just like, he was like, because. And people have heard this story before. So if you've heard this story before, you know, you already know what it is. But he was like, because. I told myself that if you ever spoke to me again, I would never let you stop speaking to me again. Ooh. Mm, that's deep. That's a bar. Come Shout on, out, come on. That's a bar right there. That's a real love. What was your reaction when you heard that? That's a bar. A little put, I feel like you got to be a little put and pop because that would have put and popped me. <laughs> I was definitely like, I mean, like, all right. <laughs> like, so what you trying to talk about then? <laughs> <laughs> So we, you know, we talked and um, it literally, but that statement let me know that he, I guess what it was is that that statement diffused, right? Mm, because yeah. it let me know like, oh, you're not here as an adversary. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of times, so you know what, when you asked earlier, like, are there things that people have brought to me that like were preconceived notions? Yeah. There are absolutely times in my relationships in the past where like men have tried to get me riled up. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Because they want to see, see the be right? Amanda Seals. The yes. Yeah, uh -huh. they want to see the razzle dazzle. Yeah. yeah, and it feels very emotionally manipulative because it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and they're not even like actually mad, or they're not even actually bothered, or whatever, whatever. They literally just want to like engage. Yeah, and I'm very sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so in that moment, I realized that like, oh, that's not what's happening here. Yeah, and so we started talking about like, okay, this is what I heard you say. And that's he's good. like, okay, well, that's not what I meant to say. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what I was actually saying was. Yeah. And so we were able to clear the air that got us there. Yeah. Got you. Cleaned up that elephant. So we did that. And then we just started catching up. And it turned out that like he had been living seven minutes away from me for three and a half years. Wow. Whoa. In New York. In LA. Oh, in LA. Same street. Got you. Same Never ran into him. Street. No, Crazy. never ran into him. And he said he would like be getting dressed for the day. Like, I wonder if I'm going to run into him. Oh, geek. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's the geek. Um, at the time, he was in Atlanta working. Uh, and then we like fell asleep on the phone. So it's like 2 a.m. for me. It's like 5 a.m. for him. Yeah. And then we woke up. And when we woke up in the morning, I was like, so what are we doing? Because I just, I'm not really trying to be your friend. And if I'm honest, like that was not a thought. Like, I didn't think about that. Like yeah. that just like came just out, came, came out. out. Yeah. And he was like, all right, so we go together. And I was like, oh, so will I hear from you later? He's like, yes, we go together. I'm like, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> and then he called me later. <laughs> And now here we are, and three years later. Here we are. That is insane. Wow, I love how you walk through kind of the series of the things because it yeah. really was several things that led to where you, how you got reconnected. It was the other people. It was the. It That's was what all I'm the saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like even him, like he was in a relationship, and then like she did him dirty. So then it's like you know, I think people we get older and we start to really think, who's real? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're real, you're trying to think who's real, mm -hmm. and I feel like the the relationships that maybe even like friend relationships that we've like rekindled it's been because like people come to realize like oh like you were a real person like the whole time and maybe i didn't realize that maybe i didn't understand that you know and those have been like my strongest friendships like the ones where like we may have fell off mm -hmm. and then we come back and it's because they're like i understand now yeah i yeah. i get it i get it yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, for Devon, I think for both of us, it was similar. Like 
we've we've lived a full life. I remember saying like I've lived a full life and then I came back and like somebody in the comments being like, so basically what she's saying is she fucked a bunch of niggas and then came back. <laughs> 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 Ooh, the internet and, is and rough. I was like y'all are mean. crazy. Uh, they got blocked too, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but I think it was more so. So like one of the main one of the first questions I asked in that like uh, before we fell asleep time was have you been to therapy? Mm. Yeah. Have you been to therapy? Mm-hmm. Because one of the other things I knew at this point in my life was like, I need to be with somebody who's on a healing journey. Yeah. Yeah. And if you've been to therapy, you can't be with someone who's against therapy. Like, it's just like when it's like, if you're sober, you can't hang out with people who like, who love to get twisted and drunk. Like you just feel yeah. Like at a certain point, you're just like out of place. You've, yeah, you've outgrown it. Yeah. You're like, not even on the this, same. This isn't working for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it, it's like the it's like the people who watch everybody play spades and never learn. I'm like learn, <laughs> like like either learn or like hang out with people who play solitaire. Yeah. Um, but I just say that to say that I really that was like a very like strong tent pole because I really wanted to know that he had explored worked through and understood things that we had dealt with in the past. Yeah. Also, he'd been married. Like, okay. you know, so and he has a daughter as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, there's like life. Yeah. yeah. And you just want to know where people are at in their life. A lot of times people don't have room for you. Mm. Yeah. That's very true. It's, it's, it's so, wow. It's so true. <laughs> and a lot of people aren't honest about it. You talked about earlier where, where the guy oh, like boy. had the conversation like, listen, you're great. I, I enjoy this. I love you. But I I can't. I don't have the capacity, whether that's through time or emotions. I can't. He just get... knew me. And he's like, I don't have the capacity for you. Yeah. I, I, do, I can't. I think it's it. hard when you have those people. You have the people who don't have it and they know it and the people who do have it. But the people who are like optimistic, like they want to be able to do it, but uh, they really don't have the ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're incapable. Yeah. But they want to. They have like the optimism to want to be able to do it, but they can't. And it's hard for them to differentiate. (laughs) So (laughs) right. They sell you a dream a lot of times because that's ultimately what they want kind of too, but they just aren't capable of doing it. So like the person I had I was seeing before him, like it was the same. Yeah. It was like, I'm in the street, but I don't want to be, you know, I want to be able to like be myself. Like I I don't want to have to be like in this like this hard life where I don't get to have feelings, you know, like I want to like live. And I was like, yeah, like, (laughs) yes. 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 Um, You know, and then it becomes like a Jasmine Aladdin type situation. You're just like, my God, like come on the carpet, babe. Like I'm going to show you a whole new world. (laughs) Like it's going to be like a whole thing. And then they realize like, Mm. oh, I'm going to have to give up like a lot yeah, yeah, for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they either decide like I want to give it up or I don't. But, you know, this is a relationship podcast. And I will say I've said I say this everywhere I can because it was a game changer for me. And my therapist, when I was asking her about Devon, she was like the difference between Devon and the last person you were seeing is that he makes decisions to make his life better. Your ex made decisions to make himself feel better. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's a huge difference. That is a, wow. <laughs> huge because difference. they may not always feel good to do the things that you need to do to make your life better. That's right. Mm-hmm. Does not feel good. Mm. That was my experience with therapy. hundred percent. I was like, oh no, I thought I was supposed to feel good in here. <laughs> and then I would leave every time. The first few sessions, like you sound like my mom. I, I got my mom down, therapy Jesus. and that's, yeah, it was. But but I'm glad I did the work because I wanted to be better. And if it took me feeling bad to get to that, then cool. That was wow. I'm putting that in my phone. That changed the game for me because it also changed kind of like the way that I would view like our process with things. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just even like being able to echo that back to Devon, right? Yeah. Because I think a lot of people don't understand like this whole like partners thing and long term partnership thing. People really only think about dating and they really don't talk about just like the journey of like a long term partnership 
is ups and downs that m- for the most part aren't even about you and the person. Like it's ups and downs of health, mm. ups and downs of their family, ups and downs of career, mm-hmm. ups and downs of mental health. Like, th- th- listen, they got a kid. You're going to have to like the ups and downs of just the ebb and flow of life. Yeah. Um, People don't write songs about that. Yeah. People don't write songs about like, my man lost his job, <laughs> but I'm riding for him. Like, you know, like they don't write that song. No. And you're like, I mean, I, when I was a singer, I wrote that song. I wrote a song called This Too Shall Pass. Like, because like, I feel like that's the stuff that people don't. That's the real. Really talk about in terms of how this whole relationship thing really ends up being a, a dance of how mm-hmm. to ride the waves together. Mm-hmm. And I think it, we've been together, it'll be three years in September. And I feel like we're just at the beginning. Mm. We've also known each other since we were 19. Yeah. And when I say just at the beginning, I mean, like, I feel like we've just now reached like your stride. the clarity of like, oh, you and oh, you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, a friend of mine who's like been married for a long time, she had told me that she was like three years. She's like, girl, it's going to take three years to even be, like, on the same page. And I was like, what? You type A. Mm-hmm. Like, whatever. I'm going to beat those odds. No, it's three years. It's, yeah. it's a three years. Yeah. Well, speaking of writing songs, you wrote a song in 2019. Can I ask for one more thing yes. before we get to the song part? Oh. Marriage. Is that something with Devon that you want? Is that something that you aspire to have? Um, Like, you know, everybody has this dream of what they ultimately want or what the ultimate goal sometimes for a relationship is like, that's the finish line. Is that something that you want? Marriage, I kids, big family, none of that. I don't, well, I'm not having kids. Okay. Um, you know, marriage is like, marriage is something that for me is like, it's not a definer. It's kind of like, if it happens, I need it to happen like within like, a framework that makes sense okay. and just loving each other is not enough of a framework that makes sense. Like if one of these fascists wins the election in 2024, we have to get married because I have dual citizenship and we got to get out of here. Like we need to possibly like shift residences, etc. Mm-hmm. And it's just easier to move about the world with somebody. If you have this stupid ass piece of paper, like it's just what it is. Like yeah. you can't just, say we are together like there has to be like no the government says we're together yeah right? <laughs> right so there's that but i think there's also just um th- for me the understanding that i feel like it's enough that we chose each other um i don't like i'm not pressed about a ring you don't need anything more than that i really don't and i I don't shade anybody who does want more than that, right? Mm-hmm. But I think as far as my path has gone, it doesn't, like a marriage doesn't necessarily like seal the deal, particularly in this day and age. Like we have just seen so many times where like marriage just doesn't seal the deal, like for a myriad of reasons, right? Yeah. And um, it's the same way that like I've heard people say like, I need, I want somebody that needs me. And it's like, I don't want somebody that needs me. I want somebody that wants Wants me, me you know, because need feels like very like outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. And it feels like anybody that can meet those needs would fill that role. Whereas like want is very like, I choose, Mm -hmm. I choose. And choosing is a, a, it's a power, it's a action. And it comes from, you know, an individual space. So no, I'm not pressed about marriage. If it happens, cool. If it has to happen, cool. But he doesn't care either. No. Okay. He been married. He yeah. did the whole. He did the thing. Did the whole <laughs> thing. Did it, did it, did it, did it. It's like the kid. He got the kid. Great, got yeah. it. You know, we mm-hmm. have a whole different life together. Got you. Mm-hmm. And it's just trippy to look at somebody and have memories of them at nineteen. Mm. So we just have a different experience yeah, a different, in this life. Yeah, you I know, like that. I can. Me and Devon met in college, and we said I love you in two weeks. That was a trauma bond, but nonetheless, <laughs> a like, bond nonetheless, a bond nonetheless. <laughs> and we were together for only a year, but it was, we always talk about like, it was the longest year. Like it was chock full. Mm. Like I got kicked out of the conservatory. Like we spent a summer in New York. I was living in a basement apartment in my, of my aunt's 
ex-husband's mother-in-law's house and okay. she was on one so that was its own thing and like my mother would call me and be like everyone says that that boy is gonna get you pregnant and I'm like whatever you know like we've just had like adventures it's like every time you do your mom it's every time <laughs> And it's absolutely accurate. Like, <laughs> go on my YouTube, Amanda Seals TV, and watch the series Me Versus My Mom, and you will see. Like, this is, <laughs> this this is what she's talking about. But, like, you, you know, we've just had, I think that actually in the three years, it took three years for us to truly get back to, like, the trust. Mm. And knowing that, like, that first time that we were together wasn't a fluke. Um, it was... It really was like a year of like yeah. real proof. I mean, I was working at Canyon Road Restaurant on 77th and 1st Avenue in Manhattan, and I was living in Flatbush. Mm. Okay. Anybody who knows New York knows that's a troop, okay? okay. I'm finishing work at 1.30 a.m., 2 a.m. Devon is coming to meet me at 77th and 1st, we're now, this is before they had a train line going up 2nd Avenue. So now we got to walk back across to Lexington, mm -hmm. take three trains to get to Flatbush. Not three? Yes. Goodness gracious. And then get home by what? 3 a.m., 3.30? But like when my family was on some like, oh, that boy is going to get you pregnant, they're not realizing like that, that man is like, keeping me safe yeah. yeah yeah and even though he didn't have like money mm -hmm. like currency in love shows up in a myriad of ways mm -hmm. for sure and him giving his time his protection just even his companionship yeah. like gave me something that i had never experienced before mm. so now as like a full-grown adult it shows up again yeah. Right. And I think for both of us, we had to kind of come back around to realize like the ways in which that shows up for each of us individually. Wow. That was which so is why he going to pick me up from the airport tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Mic drop. And I can save money on a car. <laughs> Look at that. But you bum. In your voice. <laughs> but <I'm bum. laughs> um, in 2019, you wrote a song that mm -hmm. I love. Niggas got me fucked up. Ooh, that niggas got me fucked up. I saw it many times it got Not streamed. Today. Not the one. <laughs> So, you know, one I won't in that. We love music. We me and Dre <laughs> absolutely love music. I want to know with you writing that song, one, was it at all based around an actual nigga that you were dating that had you fucked up or just a series of them? It was a situation. Okay. So, I was at the house and um I got a dick pic from a number I didn't know. It was not Devon's number. Okay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> different unsafe number. Yes. I got a dick from a number I didn't know. And I was like, why are you sending dick pics to people who you don't know? Yeah. And he was like, oh, my bad. It was a wrong number. And I was like, that doesn't even make any sense. First of mm -hmm. all, I don't know who you are. Nope. But also, why are you sending me a dick pic? And it was very clearly a black dick. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I told y'all earlier, I've seen a lot of dicks. <laughs> So I was like, it was a black dick just in case you, <laughs> just just, just so one. we're clear. So um he was like uh basically something like man fuck you and then sent me another one. And That's I was crazy. Like, oh, okay. What he thought that was going to accomplish? Ah, uh, he had you he had <laughs> fucked up. That's So I went on my Instagram and I was like, "Hey y'all, so if you could um text pictures of birth to this number i'd really appreciate it because this person keeps sending me dick pics i want you to ruin vaginas for him <laughs> that is hilarious so my very wow. awesome dedicated seal squad got busy uh and sent him photos and then he replied back and was like bitch <laughs> uh and i was just like standing at my counter and i like just was recording and I was just like, ha ha, thank y'all so much. Niggas got me <laughs> fucked up. Ooh, niggas got me <laughs> fucked up. Not, not today, today, not the, the one. one. And then I was like, ooh, that was catchy. Mm -hmm. And then I like did like a harmony version to it. And then it just went viral. And I remember Chance hitting me like, you need to make this a song. Yeah. And I was like, I guess I do need to make that a song. It's so good. And, um, 
my boy Ray Angry, who is now who now plays with the Roots. Uh, mm. Ray did the beat, and uh, my husband on Insecure, Wade Elaine Marcus, directed the music video, <laughs> and um, you know we 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 knocked it out. I mean, I try my best to like do like creative stuff. Like, so Devon is also like a super gifted producer, mm -hmm. and y'all know just so y'all clear, I don't say that because he my man. Yeah. Like, all right, I just yeah. need to make that abundantly clear because. <laughs> Even if he, because if he wasn't a super gifted producer, I would just be like, Devon is a producer. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no and adjectives and I, and I love him for other things. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, but he's like a super gifted producer. And uh, we are working because people have asked for it. We are like working on an album of my jingles that I've done on Instagram. Oh, that's fire. So, so good. I like mentioned it to him and he was like, listen, just send me like a voice note of like all the jingles. Right. Mm -hmm. So he works. He collabs with this brother, dude. And they like called me in the studio. We have a studio in the house. So he was like, they call me in the studio one day and I come in. Yo, why is dude on the peas? Like, <laughs> doom, 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 doom. <laughs> like I had done. Um, I have a song where I'm just like, this is my page. This is my page. This is my page. And I'll post what I want. And they like did a whole record. <laughs> So I was like, you know what? We going you know, if I get when I get some time um between the podcast and the radio show yeah. and the special coming out, when I get some time, I'm gonna work on that because people have been asking me for that for years. So that was what happened. Like Please, I literally is the small doses song gonna be on there. Oh wow! You want the small doses? You should. Please. Is there a full like small version doses, out? Small doses, self help from the hip. Yeah. Small doses, you're talking <laughs> that shit. It's small a, they're doses, good songs. They're good songs. Real. Small doses with me, Amanda Seals. I I mean, if you you ask, I, as you notice, when people ask for things, I will give it. Do like it, I yes. have a whole musical that's called Mo Better Woo, where I took Wu Tang records and turned them into jazz, and this all came from me like <laughs> in the house being single and bored. And like jazz, singing Wu Tang records like jazz on my Instagram, and people being like, "You should do something with that." And yeah. I'm like, "Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. sounds like a plan." <laughs> yeah, people will ask me like creatively, like, "Like, how are you like, like when you decide to pivot creatively, like, what's the process?" I'm like, "Usually, it's because someone was like, you should do that." Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Yeah, uh -huh. I'm gonna do that." So yeah, the the the. The niggas got me fucked up thing was also trippy because I always wanted to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. And I love music like y'all. Mm -hmm. And just, I love hearing like a crowd sing lyrics together. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a sucker for that. Like, so yeah. if anyone's ever come to Smart, Funny and Black, you know that because we do a whole medley at the end of the show and we sing songs during the show. One, because I think it's just like, beautiful yeah. shared culture but it's also because like i really love hearing everybody like <laughs> know together. the words yeah. right yeah. so it's just trippy that i became a comedian and that's <laughs> what it took to get people knowing my lyrics <laughs> like whether it's but um mm -hmm. or you niggas got me fucked up there was like another song that i did when roseanne barr got fired um from abc and uh oh you never heard uh, um Wait, how's it go? I'm blanking right now. <laughs> it's uh, you got the wrong one, bitch. Well, the song goes. <laughs> the song goes. You think you could be racist every single day, and it will eventually come for you and make you pay. But you got the wrong oh, one, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you got the wrong one. <laughs> you got the wrong one. I've bitch. never heard this yeah. one. And this is gonna be on the album, right? Yeah. That and one, then definitely. the choir comes in. Come on. You, you got the wrong one, bitch. You got the wrong one. Uh, yeah, it's a whole thing. Listen, I was in the choir as a child. Let me know. If you I got you. Let me know. Yeah. Let, me know. Let, me know. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know. I that was it. back when like videos I would do go would go viral. I feel like I haven't had a video go viral since my uh, trampoline <laughs> video in 2020 <laughs> when mm. an agent of mine called me to ask for a book list of black books uh, because they were all taking the day off to focus on blackness in the wake of George oh, Floyd. Oh my gosh, Lord. That, that's, that's, that's a whole nother, two. I was about to say, that's a whole nother That, that season show. was, I got banana bread from my, from my, from my um, boss, no shade. I know she, her intentions were well, oh, of but, course. The, but like sent me a little care package with like banana bread and like mm. chips and was like, you know, I'm just thinking about you during this time. And I was like, 
the bread and chips aren't doing it. It's not, I don't know. <laughs> you know what's the weird part about that for me is that, okay, on one hand, I get it. It's like, oh, like uplift black people. But it's yeah. like, if you were really bad about it, why aren't you hurting during this time? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Why isn't this affecting you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This should make you feel crazy. Yeah. yeah. The amount of trauma that we're experiencing on a daily basis in this country right now with the horrendous stories and the repetitive terrorism, the repetitive lack of effort on the part of our elected officials, et cetera. Like, it, we, I don't think people realize we're, we're in the 60s again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just haven't gotten to the assassination part yet. Whew. But we're in the 60s again. Like, yeah. like you just... You know, you're waking up and hearing all this stuff all day, every day. Like, this is not normal. It's not. Like, so when, like, white people would be like, oh, like, are you okay? I'm like, are you okay? Right. You feel if you, you feel sociopathic. Yeah. That no, you're not you bothered. You should. You should. No, it, it was, I was like, mm, you missed the mark. Yet there were other people who didn't send a package. They just... They they related. They yeah. were they too were struggling with what they were experiencing. Mm -hmm. They too felt bad and felt overwhelmed and felt traumatized by what Good. they were yes. seeing. Yes, like that, that makes sense to me. This person was like, you know, I just want to like, you know, you know, if you have a like book list that I can read about it's your like culture. They're relying on you to, I don't know. I'm I, still in service. Yeah. Also, I'm like, you're a Jewish woman in America. You've been around black people. You have black clients. Mm -hmm. Why you all of a sudden need books? Now, at this moment. Because I was like, I know about your culture. Oh, dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made it out of clay. Like, so <laughs> why haven't you made any effort to yeah. learn about my culture? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, wasn't, I wasn't saying this to be offensive. I said, I'm, I'm sure, but I'm letting you know it, it is, is offensive. offensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I did my video. <laughs> well, we thank you for coming on. And being a part of this show and Thanks. giving us your real life love scenario. It was love so good. Scenario. And being so open and transparent with us. I was appreciate it. Was there any question that you wanted to ask that you didn't ask? Because I feel like Dre always got one in the chamber. <laughs> uh, no, I think you pretty much covered everything. Okay. I think I feel good about everything. So you did a great job. First one. First, first, first yeah, one. You I guys got, did a great job. See? I, did, I got one more question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is, there it is. We just had to marinate on it a Told little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she know me a little bit. Um, so, as we talked about your real life love scenario today, whose real life love scenario would you like to hear? Oh. And I stole this from all the smoke. You got to help us get them too. To come <laughs> all the up smoke? Here. No, all the smoke. They say this at the end of their show. Uh. So, I kind of stole it from them. Shout out to Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. But who would you like to hear like real life scenario or mm -hmm. their real life love scenario? And... You got to help us get that person or those people on here. Dre, how many jobs did I tell you I already have? <laughs> <laughs> this is not the ASL challenge. Like, hey, I cannot commit to that. <laughs> we were up to nine. <laughs> like, you got to ask. Always ask, right? It's true. The worst you can get is a no. Um, but I will take this time to promote my podcast, Small Doses. Yes. Uh, we had Mia J, who is the late Young Dolph's wife, on the mm. show and she shared with us their real life love scenario. Wow. Awesome. And that was really just a beautiful tale and experience to, sh to have yeah. just because I was a fan, but like we, I feel like a lot of times, like, you know, people don't get presented as like their personal, like grounded self, because yeah. especially when they pass away, like it becomes like so grand. Um, and so I feel really honored that she felt safe to like share that with me. So make sure to check that out mm -hmm. uh, wherever you get your podcast and you can watch it on YouTube at Amanda Seals TV. I would love to hear the real life love scenario. I mean, we keep hearing Michelle talk about her and Barack's real life love scenario. So we, you don't got to do that because she done told that <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that them 10 years. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Woo, them 10 years. Yeah. Okay. Are we on the same page about that? Yes. Well, I think we are based on your eyes and my eyes. I think so. Okay. Okay. Because I don't feel like the messaging. Okay. You know what? That's an off Give me on the page. Yeah, I must have missed it. Let's, yeah, let's we go. We go. Let's, let's we, off camera. We, we off camera. Okay. Yeah, we we talk about that off camera. Yes. Now. Okay. <laughs> I, w I couldn't look at y'all both at the same time. <laughs> I'm like, what's happening right now? They doing that girl thing where like, they talk with their eyeballs. <laughs> um, I would say the couple whose real life love scenario I would like to hear. It could be a couple or individual. 
Okay. Well, I would love to hear uh, Jalen Hurts and and his boo that he oh, revealed yeah, that mm. because be she was in the kit. In the kit. Okay. Like in the <laughs> kit, kit, kit. And I know a lot of us were like, she's our sister. <laughs> we're so happy. <laughs> like, there was a lot of high fives that day on yeah. a day that could have been a dark day, mm. right? Mm-hmm. On a day that a lot of women may have felt like, damn, I thought I. Damn. Thought I had a shot. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I'd love to hear that. Uh, and I would love to hear the real love scenario of um, you know, this is not a like famous person, yeah. but it's someone that we both know, and they're a radio personality, and they have a podcast. So, like our boss, Kobe, mm. like. Him and his wife have been together for a long Long time. time. And they have like gone through things. And I think that, but like, I want to say this too. Like when I say gone through things, like I don't just mean like trauma. Because I think a lot of times. When you hear that, that's what you hear. And that becomes like the, the thing. Like let's only talk to people who have been through like terrible situations situations right but sometimes it's not even really like terrible situations it's just like life and navigating Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and like their their story like anytime he tells me stories i'm just like wow (laughs) Wow. and they're never like fantastical it's never like oh we always nailed it you know what i mean but it's like just hearing like people like working through Mm -hmm. and the one thing and this is not like related to this but to me, like the mark of, I've heard people ask me like, what is the reason why you would stay in a relationship? Mm-hmm. And because I feel like a lot of us think that we're going to get to the relationship and that shit is just going to pop off and it's going to work. And I'll be the first to tell you, like me and Devon decided to be together and then the work began. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> and the work continues, right? That's mm-hmm. right. But the work is only valuable because we are both dedicated Not to just staying together, but to getting better together. Mm. And I know that may sound like really cheesy, whatever, but I have been with people who were like, not going to let me go. But they also weren't trying to improve. Right. So like, what are we really doing? What are we doing? And Mm -hmm. I have never experienced until being with Devon. I have never experienced a nigga try. Wow. That's never one. Not one. Never. (laughs) I have never experienced what it's like for a man to really try. And trying doesn't mean it's linear, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that like, okay, I'm not going to make this mistake anymore. Yeah. Or it doesn't mean like I'm not going to dip back sometimes, right? Like, yeah. cause change takes a couple, it's like knocking over a vending machine, you know, yeah. it just takes a couple rocks. For sure. But I have never in any relationship I've ever been in really experienced a man like committed to trying. trying. Yeah. Mm. And I can say that now that I've experienced it. And I'm yeah. like, oh, this is what trying is. This like, is what it is. And then it also is reflective of like you. Like I'm like, I have to like be actively mm-hmm. trying. Like I can't show up to this like, well, I'm me. And I hear that a lot from my sisters. Like, you know, I'm me. Like I got this. This is what it is. You it's know, like you got to, you know, you want the best of me. You got to get the worst of me. Get the fuck out of here with that. That sounds <laughs> dumb as hell. Get out of here with that. I need everybody to cut that out. For sure. Please. <laughs> like... The worst of you needs to get out of here. Yeah. How about that? Do How about you work. focus on the worst, worst of, you of you and stop making that somebody else's responsibility? For that sure. is a gem. She and dropped a lot of gems. Yeah, she's a gem dropper. <laughs> We're dropping on these hoes. <laughs> yeah, gem dropper. I, I love that. We got to put them on the list. Colby, yes. I agree about Jalen Hurts for sure, especially because she's been with him through Girl. this transition, through mm-hmm. this... Sh- you now the highest paid uh and we found out about you when this man became the highest paid, paid NFL quarterback of hey, all time his eyes on the essence thing you like <laughs> sis you okay are you okay uh, right because I know it's probably a lot that's a lot that's a lot Method Man was on Smart Funny and Black and for everyone who's wondering Method Man is finer in person um I could believe it it's excessive shout Actually, out to his wife it's excessive God bless you, sis. and that's what I was gonna say like <laughs> I was like so First, I asked him, I was like, what's it like knowing that everyone knows you're fine? Like, what's that like? And he was like, (laughs) (laughs) I'm blessed. I'm blessed. (laughs) And I was like, what's it like for your wife? And he was like, you know, I really put my wife through a lot of bullshit. And I'm Mm. very lucky 
that she felt I was worth it. Mm. Wow. Because mm. I asked Devon, I was like, What's the, what was the pandemic like for you? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, you know, because you can't use your looks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just got this mask on. Because right. I felt like, like you know, be, you know, you know, Dre was out here bearding folks. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> can I, I get some extra honey about. in the, the coffee? <laughs> yeah. Listen, I knew Dre pre-marriage, pre-breed. She's amazing. But Dre was a lot. Dre was a lot. Wow. You can tell by the moisture. Wow. In the beard. Was I was, a, was lot. a lot. You were. I mean... We have Amanda he here, this, so it, we let's... don't have to focus on me. Yes, it, and was, my it was just they know. They know. <laughs> Niggas know. They know. They be acting like they don't know. Niggas yeah, know. they know. It's I don't the, know what y'all talking about. <laughs> I don't know what y'all talking morning. about. How you doing? I'm just nice. You just <laughs> nice not to people. Like good morning. How you doing? You just nice I to people. You. What's wrong yeah. with being nice? Nothing. And smiling when you talk. You know what I mean? Niggas got me fucked up. Ooh. Niggas got me fucked up. <laughs> not today. Not, not the wood. That's the jam. That's the go. jam. That's the third time. <laughs> The we love broke, you. We bro love broke you. out, and, and you are an and amazing song. husband. You are an amazing husband. <laughs> I appreciate that today. Wow. Yes, you are. I was a. I was always a great guy. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't like mean to people at all. He just was aware of his. his yeah, no one's no attraction. one's insinuating that. No, oh. but y'all be knowing. They do. Y'all be screwing in your little earrings, like yeah. About to kill him today. Uh -huh. Watch this suit. <laughs> Got this new suit. I don't know. I'm just a nice guy. And the guy. sun is out today. I would just have great conversation. <laughs> talk to people. Smile when I talk. Be gracious. Be nice. Be a gentleman. Mm -hmm. And if people were attracted to that. What can you what do? What can you do? You know, your hands are tied. It's hard out here. What can I do? Yeah, well, there's nothing I could have done. God did this. You didn't. You didn't. Did, that's right. What can you do? to do? I love it. <laughs> Amanda, we so 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 appreciate you being here with us. Thank today. you so this much. This was such a great conversation. Many appreciate many blessings you. on all the things that you're doing, as well as your real love scenario. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to you. I really appreciate this. You plugged no everything doubt. that you're doing. Thank Anything you. coming up? Tours? You're appearing anywhere? Um, so we will be live streaming for the first time ever, Smart, Funny, and Black. Uh, oh. My Smart, Funny, and Black is my pop culture comedy variety game show. We're doing two free shows in Nashville on June 17th with the National Museum of African American Music as a part of their Juneteenth uh, festivities. And these are shows that I am gifting to the city of Nashville. These are coming nice. out of my pocket. And it really is just an opportunity for the people of Nashville, but also for all of us to engage in some just like really revelatory black love celebration space. Like we've mm. just been taking L's and L's and L's and yeah. L's. And I wanted us to have also a moment where we can like <sighs> and yeah. like yeah. get revitalized and, you know, just kind of get our our strength back up because the fight has to continue. So you can go to amandaseals.com and sign up for the live stream link and you'll be able to watch uh, on June 17th, Smart, Funny, and Black live at 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Love it. Dope. And like she said, make sure you check out Small Doses and the radio show. I don't even think you plugged Yes, that. you can check out my podcast, Small Doses, wherever you get your podcasts. You can also watch it on YouTube at Amanda Seals TV. And you can get bonus content at my Patreon, The Amandaverse. Uh, and then my radio show, The Amanda Seals Show, is syndicated. So you can find out if we're in your city at theamandasealsshow.com. And you can listen wherever you get your podcasts as well because we turn it into a podcast every day. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. And I mean, my YouTube is also growing. So would love for y'all to come over there and subscribe at Amanda Seals TV and check out the content. It's good stuff. Really good stuff. Well, again, thank you. Andre designed the banner. So. I did good design job. the banner. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you. I remember when I asked her to be on the show, she was like, you asked me for money or something? He was so like, so, um, I, you know, so I just wanted to <laughs> present to you the possibility of maybe perhaps joining us. I'm like, what is he about to ask me? Does he want me to be a surrogate? Like, what? <laughs> You need a kidney? <laughs> right. Like, he's like, yeah. Actually, you asking me for money? Back to the first question. <laughs> it's like, I mean, is it real love, real lame? Like, what yeah. are we doing? But no, it was just to be on the show. I'm like, you could have texted that. <laughs> that was a text. Nah, I appreciate that. And thank you for joining us. Amanda Sills, everybody. Yay. Thank y'all.